Rainer had not expected this when she had, tried, to kill Issei Hyodo. Emphasis on the word tried. Word of advice my dear, if you're going to kill a guy on his first date, at least offer him a asterisk 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 job first, smart op perv Issei. Issei X hair. Chapter 1 Hey peeps. This is Colesake with the first chapter of my first DXD story titled, Technical Support. I hope you guys like it. Don't be afraid to inbox or review and tell me what you think. I'm also still working on my other stories. Let's go. Rainer deserved this. She had spent countless centuries completing her missions, faithfully getting results and proving her dedication time and time again. It seemed that all of that hard work had finally paid off. She had been summoned to stand before the highest level of leadership within the Grigori, the High Council. They lauded her skills, praised her unwavering commitment and then handed her a brand new mission which was to serve as the perfect opportunity to leave a favorable impression on her superiors and secure her place as a contender for a promotion and a new set of wings. Nothing was of more importance than proving herself useful to the Grigori and raising her status within the fallen angel community. Normally an order that came from the top dealt with assassination, sabotage or maybe a little seduction but this was mostly surveillance. That was indeed strange. Rainer would admit however that her own curiosity had been piqued as she skipped through the manila folder assigned to her new target, the human known as, Issei Hayudu. Any human who had managed to garner the interest of the Grigori's highest members would more than likely be a possessor of a powerful sacred gear. Would he be recruited then? It wasn't impossible. There were several whispers in the underworld that the fallen angel sect had a habit of taking on promising youngsters as their pupils. The rumors implied that the purpose if such a project was to ensure that the fallen angels had an undeniable advantage if another great war were to happen. With all these factors in mind she had decided that she would take this mission very seriously. She would be cautious, she would be precise, she would be deceptive. She would be utterly disappointed. Despite the air of importance and secrecy that surrounded this boy, Issei Hayudu was nobody special. Just another average-looking, perverted, hormone-fueled teenager, who had easily fallen for the, I want to be your girlfriend, so let's go out, ruse. To make matters worse the sacred gear hidden in his body wasn't even particularly noteworthy. There was barely any sign of magical potency in his aura. It didn't take long for her to make a decision concerning him. There was no way she was going to waste her time on this child when she had several other side projects that could use her attention. She would eliminate Issei Hayudu in order to free herself from this mission and to also negate the tiny possibility of him becoming a threat in the future. Sacred gear users were often killed if the leaders thought that the chances of them losing control and going on a rampage were very high but she wasn't interested in waiting on a verdict from them concerning this one. The date she had used as her chance to get close to her target and to complete her assessment was almost over. To his own credit, Issei may have been a mindless purr, but he had done his best to keep her well pleased during the evening's activities. Was it still a little boring? Yes, but it certainly wasn't the worst date she'd ever been on. Perhaps a human girl would have enjoyed it more, or someone who was actually interested in him like that. It didn't matter though, Issei Hayudu wouldn't be going on any more dates after this. Rainer spoke softly as she turned to face Issei. The park was mostly empty in the evening hours as most people were either at home or enjoying the luxuries of the city. Do you mind doing me a favor to commemorate our first date, Issei-kun? The brown-haired teen blushed as he scratched the back of his head. Rainer mentally chuckled at his shyness. Little Perv probably thinks I want a kiss or something. Ah. Sure Yuma-chan. What kind of favor? Could you die, please? Issei blinked a few times. What? Rainer smiled sweetly as she transformed, proudly displaying her black wings and her far more curvaceous figure to the young man in front of her. I did enjoy our time together and I will certainly treasure this little gift you bought for me but all good things must come to an end. A red spear of holy light crackled to life in Rainare's outstretched hand. Sorry about this, it's best you die before you become a threat to us. If you want to blame anyone, Blame God for putting a sacred gear inside your body. Rainer lunged forward her weapon pointed at its target, burying itself deep into the abdomen of Issei Hayudu. Well it was supposed to bury itself into the his abdomen. Crack Rainare's eyes widened as she watched her spear's tip break off and dissipate. Issei's shirt had been sliced open by her attack but his body was still very much intact. The teen sighed. Damn it, mom had bought this ugly shirt for our date you know. 
Rainer slowly lifted her gaze to meet her target's eyes. They were still the same brown color but now they had the sharp, calculating gaze of a well-trained warrior. The youthful spark that once defined his gaze was long gone. She slowly took a few steps back as she felt several waves of energy ripple within Issei's body. Where was this power coming from? WHWH what? But your sacred gear isn't even. So things are finally moving forward, huh? Issei smirked and Rainer felt like she was a deer standing face to face with a hungry roaring lion. Word of advice Yuma Chan, the next time you're gonna kill a guy on his first date, at least offer him a handjob first. She couldn't move. Her instincts were begging, screaming for her to leave, but his eyes kept her rooted to the spot, even her breathing had slowed down. Step by step Issei drew closer to her until they were face to face. I assume that there is a person that you answer to? A superior? Can you contact them and bring them here? Rainer shuddered as she felt herself nod a few times, her body was responding without her consent. Good. Let them know that I'd like to have a little chat. DXD The moment Rainer activated the emergency summoning matrix, she received an answer. And it wasn't just anybody. It was the general of the Grigori himself, Azazel, his trademark smug expression ever in place. It was almost as if he had been expecting her call. Issei took a few seconds to look Azazel up and down before turning to Rainer. You sure this is the right guy? He looks more like one of those gay super suave fashion designers than a demon. Azazel chuckled heartily. I'm sure I'm not the only one here who makes questionable clothing choices. That shirt you're wearing is atrocious. Issei's left eyebrow twitched as he pointed an accusatory finger at Azazel. Hey, my mom bought me this ugly shirt. A few seconds of silence passed before Issei sighed. Ah well played sir. Azazel smiled as he unfolded his black wings. Allow me to introduce myself, I am the fallen angel Azazel, leader of the Grigori and one of this young lady's superiors. Issei took a second to ponder as he glanced at Reynare's black wings. Fallen angels, huh? That's interesting. My apologies for thinking you were demons. I am. Issei Hayudu. Do you mind if we have a word in private, Azazel? Azazel complied with the request without hesitation as he and Issei disappeared into a darker area of the park leaving a very confused Rainer behind. DXD a few hours after she had been left alone, the mysterious power that had bent Rainer to Issei's will had slowly ebbed away leaving her exhausted but relieved to be in control of her body again. The fallen angel would have used her remaining strength to hastily follow after Azazel to warn him of Issei's strange powers if she had not sensed them already coming back towards her. Wait. Dot why was there a third presence? Both Azazel and Issei had small smiles on their faces. Issei seemed tired yet relaxed. Azazel seemed wary and cautious yet they were both still smiling. In Issei's hand was a red scaly lizard-like creature, the size of a parrot. It didn't seem to be in much pain despite the fact that Issei was holding it by the neck. I'd like to thank you again for your help, Azazel-san. You've made things much easier for me. Azazel glanced at the creature in Issei's hand before responding. I suppose that I should be the one thanking you, considering what I've learned tonight. Don't mention it. Let's just both scratch our respective backs, yay. And remember let's keep this on a need-to-know basis, only the top guns. Azazel nodded. Of course, they will want to meet you themselves though. Issei sighed. Of course, when the time is right. There were too many questions running through Reynare's head as the men finally came to stand before her again. But one remained preeminent. Where did Issei Hayudu get this type of power? Rainer. Hearing Azazel call her name was enough to pull the raven-haired female out of her thoughts, she focused all of her attention on her general. I'm disappointed that you saw it fit to take matters into your own hands and eliminate a sacred gear user without permission, especially when your mission was to be of an observatory nature. Rainer gulped. There were many dark rumors of what Azazel did to those that disappointed him. Nevertheless I'm giving you another chance, I have a new very important mission for you. Rainer mentally sighed in relief. Hopefully this new challenge would keep her locked away in the Grigori library or have her visiting the bars and brothels of the underworld. It didn't matter, anything that would keep her away from. You will be serving Issei Hayudu as his personal attendant and bodyguard. What? Rainare's eyes bugged out as Azazel continued. Consider his every order as if it was a direct command from me assist and advise him in his endeavors, be his eyes and ears on the ground. Rainer slowly nodded under Azazel's withering gaze. 
I accept, sir. Good. Azazel once again glanced at the red lizard in Issei's hand. Issei followed his line of sight before smiling. Oh right. I guess I should introduce you too. Rainair this is my sacred gear. The Red Dragon Emperor, Lizzie the Lizard. Lizzie, this is Rainair our brand new bodyguard that just tried to kill us a few hours ago. The scaly creature within Issei's grasp spoke. Partner, please have told you before that my name is Deidre. Your name is Lizzie because I say so, damn it. It's your fault I'm in this damn mess anyways. Be happy I haven't made you into boots or a suitcase yet. Rainair blinked a few times as Issei and the Red Dragon Emperor continued their argument. She slowly turned her gaze back at Azazel who gave her a sheepish grin. Well, it could be worse, right? Rainair watched with morbid fascination as Issei attempted to wring the mini dragon's neck. She would spend a good portion of the next few days reassuring herself that her general's previous statement was right. What did she do to deserve this? That's it. Please review, fav, alert and share this story. CH1 of 21 next, chapter 2 this is chapter 2. I will be answering reviews soon. Let's go. Chapter 2 DXD Rainair lazily stifled a yawn as she took her seat at a black marble top table in the corner of the room. The pastry shop that Issei had chosen as their rendezvous point for today was situated not too far away from his school. The building itself was a little on the small side but the scents that saturated the air were pleasant enough to keep one solely focused on the delicacies that were on sale. She would restrict herself to just ordering a vanilla milkshake this time, she had a personal rule of not fully indulging certain appetites while she was working. She had a gut feeling that her new job as caretaker for Issei would be far from simple. That brat was becoming more and more of a mystery to her. Last night after Azazel's departure, Issei had launched into an impromptu interrogation session asking her questions about several different people, places and things connected to the mystical world. His questions were a mix of being alarmingly specific and intrusive, silly and outrageous, and were even sometimes perverted and idiotic, but this only confused her more. The Issei Hayudu she had been watching for the past few weeks had not openly shown this level of maturity nor intelligence. For a professional who had excelled in the field of reconnaissance she had utterly failed at seeing past the mental facade of a 16-year-old boy. Not leaving out the fact that this 16-year-old was the bearer of the Great Red Dragon Emperor's boosted gear, one of the most powerful sacred weapons on the planet. Another detail she had easily missed. For her own reputation sake she would have to keep this embarrassment a secret from Donaseek and the others. Speaking of them, she needed to find some time to make contact with her colleagues so they could share information again. The last time they had spoken as a group, Warner had reported that she had found an ancient machine in an old Colombian temple that was rumored to be capable of removing one's sacred gear. It was her intention to have it brought to Japan in order to cultivate the vast number of sacred gears in the region, adding strength to the Grigori. Originally, the greater factions of the underworld had discredited the devices themselves as simple, relics, and that the stories of their power were just that. Stories. But during the early stages of the Great War, a special squad of Heaven Seraphim raided the mansions of some very powerful high-class devils and had destroyed enough of these relics to have the mystical community thinking twice. Flashes of a memory passed before her eyes as she recalled hearing one of her cherubim commanders highlighting the dangers that such tools could pose to Heaven and the balance of the mystical word. A sour expression crossed Reynare's face. She didn't like thinking about her time in Heaven. She quickly masked her expression as a waiter placed her previously ordered vanilla milkshake in front of her. Here you go miss. The teenage face of Amano Yuma smiled brightly at the worker. Rainair had decided to stick with the undercover identity. Thank you so much. The young male worker blushed and nodded a few times before going off to serve the other customers, always sparing a glance at her whenever he could. Rainair mentally chuckled. She would probably start getting free milkshakes at this place if she played her cards right. Humanity had failed at almost everything they had put their hand to during their time on the earth but, comfort food, was one of the things they had gotten right. She would probably only admit to herself that the delicacies of the human world was one of her guilty pleasures. It was a good thing humans were so easy to manipulate and control. Free pizza would not be possible otherwise. As she took a few sips of her treasured milkshake, Rainair glanced at time on her smartphone screen. Issei should have been here by now. What the hell was taking that idiot so long? Forgive me for interrupting your milkshake. Rainair slowly looked up. 
half annoyed with herself that she had been caught off guard. It was a high school boy from Kuo Academy, a very handsome devil high school boy to be exact. Rainer narrowed her eyes. It wasn't any secret that the majority of the area belonged to the devils, but she was sure this place was classified as neutral ground. Which meant that she wasn't trespassing. And to make matters even more interesting the devil boy was not alone. There was a short white-haired girl standing near the entrance and she could sense two other presences nearby. Now Rainer was fully annoyed with herself. Had she been so wrapped up in thought that she didn't take notice of any of this happening? It was best that she played her cards very carefully right now, she had no interest in starting a fight. Azazel had specifically told her to keep a low profile and starting a fight with a group of devils in a place packed with humans was not in any shape or form, keeping a low profile. Hopefully these devils were just being a little territorial and weren't hot-headed or stupid. Rainer tilted her head. Yes, can I help you? At that moment each patron slowly stood up and exited the pastry seemingly lost in a world of their own. Rainer could easily tell that it was the use of mind manipulation magic, they wanted to have the shop to themselves. Not many devils had the skill or power to use this level of magic. Who were these kids? The devil boy bowed politely which had earned a look of genuine curiosity from Rainer. My name is Kiba Yuto. Our king would like to have a word with you. His king? And that is when Rainer noticed the small insignia on the boy's collar. It was the seal of the one of the most powerful, influential and financially stable devil households, the Gremory clan. Oh crap. DXD. I would like to express my gratitude to you for agreeing to meet with me on such short notice. Yay right, as if I actually had a choice in the matter. Rainer's facial expression did not reflect her thoughts as she graced Rias, the heiress of the Grimori clan with a coy smile. It would be uncouth of me to reject an invitation from the heiress of such a respected devil clan as the Gremory. Rias returned the shallow smile as she and another girl, a long-haired brunette who was most likely her queen, took the empty seats right across from the fallen angel. Wait was this Barraquil's daughter? The one who became a devil? A Kano? Can I get you anything else, a cinnamon bun perhaps? It's one of our shop's specialties. Rainer responded promptly to Rias' inquiry. No, I'm quite all right. To be honest I'm more concerned about the subject of this little meeting of ours than your delicious cinnamon buns. Since when has this shop belonged to the devils? Have they been expanding their territory? But all the workers are human. A devil-owned shop with all human staff, that's quite clever. Rias nodded. Yes, that's quite understandable. Let's get down to business then. The mood changed. Rainer could feel it. She was no longer having a light conversation. She was about to play verbal chess with a demon heiress that was known for being sharper than many of her peers. Six weeks ago, a student of Kuo Academy who was also a servant of the Sitri clan went missing in this area while carrying out her duties. The investigation itself had been at a standstill due to a lack of credible information and evidence as to what may have happened. Rainer listened keenly. There was a reason the Gremory clan heiress was sharing this information. Last night another one of their servants was again carrying out duties in this area when they were attacked by an unknown assailant. The devil was severely injured but managed to escape with his life. After investigating the scene of the attack, we found this. Akano produced a small brown pouch and emptied its contents onto the table. Black feathers. Not just any black feathers, black feathers from the wings of a fallen. They were fresh too. Feathers that fell from the wings of a fallen dissolved into dust after a day or so passed, which meant that there was a decent amount of credibility to the heiress story. The fallen angel concluded Rias' argument for her. And since I'm a fallen angel that has been spotted near devil territory after last night's incident, I'm being considered as a suspect, correct? Rias responded to the question. Even you would have to admit that the circumstances are just a bit too coincidental for us to overlook them. Rainer nodded. Not only because she agreed but because understood how serious of a situation this was. It was one thing for a devil that belonged to a powerful clan to be attacked in a foreign environment but to have it happen in a, a territory that was owned by the heiress of one of the few pure bleed clans left was absolutely unacceptable for her and the devil hierarchy. As a fallen angel she had no qualms about terminating devils, she didn't have a raging fetish for it like many of the others but she had killed just as many of them as the opportunities presented themselves. The hard truth however was that an attack of this nature in such an area was not doing the Grigori any favors. 
there was a reason why Azazel had ordered them not to attack the important, powerful and well-connected members of the mystical society unprovoked. The Fallen Angel faction was in no way ready to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with any of the major factions or groups. Whoever was doing this, had an agenda. A breathtakingly stupid agenda. But an agenda all the same. It was almost as if the culprit wanted to start another. Another. Another war. That little shit. Rainer refocused onto the task at hand, she could confirm her suspicions later. This was the type of incident that people often wanted to see resolved quickly. Even if that meant someone would have to serve as a scapegoat. She would not allow herself or the Grigori to suffer needlessly. Her next words would have to be chosen carefully. I understand that under these circumstances you are hard pressed to resolve this issue in a manner pleasing to your elders but I assure you that neither I nor the Grigori are the ones responsible for the death of the Citri clan servants. A few seconds passed in silence before Rainer continued. My appearance in such close proximity to your territory is mostly coincidental. Rias frowned and Rainer felt like she had just voluntarily slammed her head into a bear trap. Ordinarily I would want to give you the benefit of the doubt but I know for a fact that you being here isn't mere coincidence at all. Rhea's queen pulled out a small envelope and slid it across the table to Rainer. The fallen angel eyed the package warily before slowly opening it. The envelope's soul was a picture, the place looked familiar, it was from yesterday. It was a picture of her and... Oh no Rhea's leaned forward just a little, her demonic energy barely rippling around her fingertips. Please tell me about the Grigori's interest in Issei Hayudu. If you are not the ones targeting and attacking our students then why do I find evidence of a Grigori agent interacting regularly with one? Is he supposed to be next on your list? The energy that was only at Rhea's fingertips swiveled inside her entire frame. If any harm comes to him, I assure you that your head will be on of the first to roll. Rainer gulped heavily. If it did come down to a fight she was certain that she could defeat most of the Gremory heiress peerage. Her biggest concerns were of course Barraquil's daughter and Rias herself. The fallen angel captain would surely kill her if she did any permanent damage to his daughter and even though she wasn't sure she could beat Rias in a fight she was even more that her older brother, Sirzex, one of the four Satans, would hunt her down to the ends of the realms if any serious harm came to his little sister. She was completely screwed. Rias didn't seem to be as patient as she was before. I'm still waiting on an answer, fallen. Rainer cringed at the authoritative tone that Rias now possessed. If she was going to live through this she needed a way out. An answer. An alibi. A distraction. Something. Anything. Ding a ling a ling. Three pair of eyes blinked in surprise as the door to the pastry shop swung open. The new entrant was familiar to each person sitting at the table. Mostly because he was the topic of discussion at the time. Before any of three females could speak, Issei presented his brightest smile. Hey Ray Ray Chan. I'm sorry I'm late. Rias and Akano glanced at each other as Rainare's eye ticked. Ray Ray Chan? Like seriously? Ding a ling a ling. The door burst open again as the knight that introduced himself earlier and the short white haired girl rushed in. The knight quickly drew his sword of its hilt as he faced Issei. Forgive us, President. This guy somehow slipped past us without even making a sound. Issei chuckled. Don't blame yourself, pretty boy. I spent a good chunk of time, borrowing, my dad's credit card to buy porn. Being sneaky is just one of many cultivated talents. The white-haired girl frowned. You really are a huge pervert, aren't you? Issei nodded. I am. But I guess you're a little too young to see the beautiful themes portrayed in the performance of adult erotica, Shorty. The girl blushed but her frown remained. Rias took the opportunity to speak. Issei Hayudu. My name is Rias Gremory, a fourth year at your high school and president of the Occult Research Club. Issei continued. You are also one of the hottest girls on campus, a straight-a student, the heiress to the Gremory clan of devils and overseer of the town of Kuo, correct? If Rias was surprised she didn't show it. I see. Dot you know about the existence of the different supernatural factions. Issei nodded as he patted his stomach. Yay I was introduced to it rather violently. Rainer had the decency to blush and look away. Issei continued as he stood closer to Rainer paying very little attention to Kiba and his sword. I understand that you girls were having a very important conversation about whoever has been attacking those other devils. Rainer may be a bit of a bitch but I'm sure she's not the one doing it. Akano titled her head in curiosity. You were eavesdropping with the use of magic? Issei smiled. 
Ah hello Akeno Senpei. Let's just say I have a heightened sense of hearing. Rias interjected. Is that one of the abilities of your sacred gear? Issei actually seemed surprised. You can actually sense Lizzie inside of me? I'm quite impressed. Akeno blinked. Lizzie? Kiba was the one to interrupt this time. You said that you knew for a fact that the fallen angel was innocent, how? Issei smirked. Simple. She's my girlfriend. It is said that an individual should learn something new every day. Dot and on this day Issei learned that Rainer had a pretty solid left hook. All eyes bugged out as Rainer sent Issei to the ground with a punch that would make Mike Tyson proud. I'm not your girlfriend you little perv. Issei grumbled as he rubbed his sore jaw. You weren't saying that when I was buying you food on our date. Why you little? Rainer prepared to deliver more of her terrible feminine justice when Issei countered. You know, you're probably not making a good argument for your innocence while attempting to murder me in front of my schoolmates. Rainer blinked and slowly turned back to look at Rias who seemed to be a mixture of amused, confused and irritated. Oom. Issei had taken the chance to pull himself to his feet. And people say that the art of conversation is dead. Rainer tried to silence him with a fiery state, but the brown-haired teen ignored it. As I was saying, I spent the majority of last night with Rainer doing couple stuff, there's no way she was the assailant from last night, and after my conversation with the leader of the Grigori, I'm sure that they have no interests in attacking random devils and starting a war. Rias folded her arms under her impressive bosom. Even if that is true, it doesn't change the fact that we have a fallen angel or a group of fallen angels out there causing trouble for all of us. Issei nodded. I agree and that's why I'm suggesting that we DXD Rainer sat silently on a chair in Issei's bedroom watching him intently as he sat cross-legged on the floor meditating. Something on your mind, Ray Ray Chan. Stop calling me that. Nah, I like it but if you wanna stop me you could always try killing me again? Rainer buried her face into her palms. Don't tempt me. Another minute of silence passed before the fallen angel spoke again. Why did you suggest to those devils that we could help them? No. Thank you, for saving your well-shaped butt back there? Rainer growled. Right, answering your question. You're an information specialist Rainer. I'm sure you've already narrowed down the possible suspects to a list of people or a specific person. Rainer narrowed her eyes. This guy was sometimes really surprising. If we help the devils that oversee Kuo it will make it easier for me to carry out my business and will help the relations between the Grigori and the devils. And that is your mission, right? To help me accomplish my goals? Plus it was the only way they were going to let us out of that pastry store without a fight. Rainer sighed heavily. All I'm going to do is check a few sources before confirming my suspicions and passing that information on, the rest is up to them. Issei nodded. That should be enough. There was more silence and Rainer found herself still staring holes in the back of Issei's head. Something else, Ray Ray Chan. Rainer would learn to ignore the nickname for now. What are your goals anyway? Issei slowly turned to face her. There was something about his presence that reminded her of Azazel. Powerful yet calm yet dangerous yet harmless yet. She tried not to be caught up in his aura as he whispered five words that made her spine shiver. To keep us all alive. DXD that is it. Sorry for the long wait. That is chapter 2 of technical support. I am Kolsek. Have a good Easter Friday. Please read and review. Bless up. Previous CH2 of 21 next chapter 3. Surprise, surprise. Thanks to the holidays, Easter. I was able to get chapter 3 up and running before any of you knew it. Please continue to read, review and share my story. Review answering chapter will be next. I appreciate the support. Here we go. Chapter 3. DXD. Dot and he said that its name was, Lizzie? Rias nodded in the affirmative as she slowly descended into the warm embrace of the Sea Tree Clan hot spring. She could literally feel the bubbling water slowly relieving the aches and pains that the problems of the past weeks had brought on. She would need to invest into one of these for herself soon enough. Yes. I checked a few of my family sources but none of them have ever heard of a sacred gear with such a silly name. It's more than likely an alias. Sona, the heiress of the Sea Tree Clan and the Kuo Academy Student Council president frowned as she tried to not pay too much attention to her longtime friend's rather impressive bust. Hmm, that would make sense. There is a strong possibility that Issei's sacred gear is quite powerful and even a bit dangerous if the Grigori saw it fit to have one of their agents following him about. Rias once again nodded. 
Her face was now covered with a small white towel as she comfortably laid her head on a small pillow at the water's edge. Her name is Rainer. Despite her attitude and treatment of Issei, they seem rather close to each other. Perhaps the Grigori want to draft him into their ranks. Sona stole another short glance at Rhea's breasts before glancing at her own underdeveloped chest. Yes perhaps, but I'm sure you won't allow them to do that without offering him a chance to join your peerage instead. That's why you had originally shown interest in him, yes. A rare moment of complete silence passed. I wasn't aware that I was this transparent to you, Sona. Sona smiled. We've been friends for years, Rias. I know when you are interested in someone or something. I still find it rather odd that you would have picked one of the Academy's most devious perverts as a possible recruit. What did you see in him? I could sense that there was magical power hidden deep inside his body from the very moment I saw him. I didn't know for sure that it was a sacred gear but I believed that he had serious potential. He may seem to be just a pervert and a slacker but some of his grades are rather impressive, aren't they? Yes, many of his teachers have commented that he has shown rare moments of great intellect. He sometimes asks amazing questions and even aces difficult exams to make a point. He never does enough to be in the top 5 but never falls out of the top 15 either. He's still often caught having perverted conversations with his friends among other deplorable acts. But I should expect that a pervert like you would find that irresistible. Rias immediately rebutted. Hey, I'm not a pervert. Sona countered easily. I've seen the stuff you hide in the back of your closet. Rias was silenced instantly, her face emulating her hair's shade of red. Sona mentally congratulated herself before continuing on to a completely different topic. The mission is three nights from now. How are preparations coming along on your end? Rias who was still recovering from the full-on blush still had the mental capacity to answer the question. The information provided by Rainer checks out. Our enemies are two ex-Grigori agents that seem dissatisfied with the ceasefire. They've established a base on the outskirts of Kuo. They don't intend to be moving any time soon. Sona groaned. This won't be easy. I'm sure the elders are waiting to hear how we handle this. Our top priorities will have to be gathering information eliminating the enemy and preventing casualties especially among the citizens of Kuo. Rias smirked. That's why we're using one of the famous Sea-Tree clan barrier techniques to keep the fighting in one area. You can leave the rest to the capable peerage of Rias Gremory. Sona returned the smirk. My my, aren't we confident? You know that there's no shame in requesting backup from your brother, right? Rias took a few seconds to answer. The region of Kuo was given personally into my care. To ask for my brother's assistance at the first sign of trouble would send the wrong type of message to the underworld. I assume it is the same reason you haven't asked your sister for help either. I assure you that the threat level of those fallen angels does not warrant involvement from our older siblings. Sona nodded. I agree, we need to demonstrate our ability to resolve these issues with our own strengths. Both girls stayed quiet for some time simply enjoying the effects of the hot spring and each other's company. Rias would be the one to break the silence. Osona? Oh, hmm. Don't worry about your breasts. I hear that the women of the Sea Tree clan are mostly late bloomers. I don't think you should be comparing your chest to mine just yet. Sona buried her head under the water's surface with a small squeak escaping her mouth. Rhea's smile was as wide as the Panama Canal. Perhaps she wasn't the only transparent one here tonight. DXD three nights later. Issei watched with keen interest as a solid magical dome formed itself around the small warehouse district that would form the arena for the imminent fight. He was sitting on the ledge of a small clock tower not too far from where Rias and her team were preparing to take on the ones responsible for the recent attacks. Perched on his shoulder was a red eagle-sized, dragon with green eyes. Most would assume that this was a familiar but they would be wrong. It was a physical manifestation of the legendary red dragon emperor himself. Issei spoke softly as the chilled night breeze slowly washed over him. A barrier technique? That actually makes sense. This fight might just get out of hand especially if those fallen angels get desperate. Diedrich grunted. The Seatree clan is known for having some of the most powerful barrier techniques in the underworld. Even though the current heiress is young and inexperienced, I can tell that nothing short of a blast from me or Albion could break through that barrier easily. Hum Albion? Who is that, Lizzie? One of your reptilian friends? Am I going to have set up a playdate? Diedrich sighed heavily. Despite the fact that I'm still not used to having a physical body again, you do know I could use my power to burn you to a crisp from the inside out? Issei smirked. I am aware you could try, 
Yes. But there is a large difference between attempting and doing. Diedrich rolled his green gem-like eyes. I swear you're the most annoying partner I've ever had. I like to leave my mark whenever I go, Lizzie. It's so that people always have something to remember me by. I have the feeling that people would rather forget you altogether. Especially if you give them all such ludicrous nicknames. Only the special people get nicknames and in time they all warm up to it. Isn't that right, Ray Ray Chan? A few seconds passed before a shout could be heard from an adjacent rooftop. Oh for fuck's sake. Issei smiled. Why don't you come over here and give me and Liz some company? The female fallen angel who had been watching Issei and Diedrich for the past hour slowly made her way over to the teenager in his sacred gear. Her annoyance was firmly established on the fact that she had constantly failed at carrying out surveillance on Issei without being comprised. Did his sacred gear really give him such heightened senses? Rainer slowly nodded in respect to the almighty Welsh dragon. The stories of his power was well known to all the mystical factions. It is a pleasure to make your acquaintance again, Red Dragon Emperor. Diedrich nodded. Your respect is quite refreshing, Fallen. Perhaps I'll change my mind about killing you for attempting to kill my partner. Rainer gulped and slowly flew herself backwards from the seemingly irritated dragon. Issei intervened. Oh stop being so dramatic Lizzie. I already told you that she just had her priorities a little mixed up. She won't be attacking us again unless it's a spar. Right? Rainer nodded weakly. Issei continued. Good. Now I need the both of you to get along so no more murder threats and no more running away in absolute terror. Am I understood? To Reynare's great confusion the powerful dragon king known for having power that rivaled some of the most powerful beings ever. Merely sighed. Fine. If she does nothing to anger us, her life is not forfeit. Issei smiled before beckoning for Rainer to sit beside him. The fallen angel slowly took her seat keeping an eye on the magical dragon that was sitting on Issei's opposite shoulder. The brown-haired teenager put a hand to his chin. I guess since we're all one big happy family there's nothing wrong if you guys call each other by your nicknames too. Diedrich's eyes glowed with tremendous power. If she calls me Lizzie, I will end her. Rainer gulped again and Issei chuckled. Don't worry Ray Ray Chan. He's just shy, he'll come around in time. Rainer thought it was wisest to change the subject of discussion. I thought you said we were only going to give them some information and allow them to handle the rest. Why are we here? Well I am here because the thought crossed my mind that it would actually be in our best interest if we were actually here to make sure things go smoothly. To make sure things go smoothly. Well imagine a scenario where things go south and one or even worse both heiresses end up dead because of the information that we provided. Reynare's eyebrows furrowed. Shit. The devil community would think the Grigori set them up. Exactly. That's why we're here. Tonight also presents us with the opportunity to gauge the strength and weaknesses of our acquaintances without fighting them ourselves. Reynare listened keenly. This Issei sounded like a tactician more than anything else. I'm also here because I hope that Rias Sempe and Akano Sempe can have a few wardrobe malfunctions during the battle. Rainer ignored the perverted chuckle that left Issei's lips. The excitement in Issei's eyes were enough to convince her that he was actually being honest about that last part. Wait but you came out here without calling me? What if something happened to you? Issei nonchalantly directed a thumb at the dragon resting on his shoulder. We can take care of ourselves and I knew you were watching me tonight so I just allowed you to follow me. Rainer groaned as she slowly began to rub her temples. Why was this kid such a headache? You know I've been watching some videos on how to do a proper stress relieving full body massage. Rainer growled. Considering that over 90% of your search engine history is porn, I wouldn't allow you to touch me with a 10 foot pole. Issei scratched his head. But you literally rubbed yourself against me several times during our first date. Are you one of those girls that get off on blue balling guys? Rainer barely managed to compose a response. WWW. I, I didn't. Dot was for the MM mission. Diedrig would surprisingly be the one that came to Reynare's rescue. Quiet. Things are getting interesting. Issei turned his attention away from the furiously sputtering Rainer to the warehouse that served as the enemy's base. Hey, you're right. I can feel their magic. Dot was that Akano Senpei? Wow. She's pretty strong. Dot the swordsman and shorty seem to be distracting him so the heavy hitters can go for the killing blow. Rainer could also follow the bottle's flow based off the magical auras and attacks being thrown around. She doubted the warehouse itself would be left standing when things were done. But something felt off. 
where was the second culprit? The information she received said that there was a pair of fallen angels going around the country attacking servants of the pure blood devil. Clans trying to trigger a major confrontation. The two males had been very important operatives during the war but had seemed to have lost their significance since Azazel had withdrawn the Grigori forces. Both members of the Fallen went Mia soon after. Well isn't that clever? Rainer left her train of thought to give attention to Issei's statement. What is it? Issei was now looking in a different direction. The other Fallen Angel is heading directly for the Barrier Team. His mission is more than likely to kill the Tree clan heiress and anyone else he can get his hands on. Most of them will to be too focused to keep the barrier up to help with the fight. Rainer frowned as she felt a spike of energy that was certainly not any of the devils. Things just got worse. Issei was now standing on the edge of his clock tower. His tone no longer conveyed humor and playfulness. Explain. That spike of power you just felt is a special technique that was created by the original Twelve Apostles of Christ. It's a special set of prayers that converts an area into an anti-devil zone. Diedrich grumbled. That doesn't sound very good. Well, it won't kill them but they'll be in a lot of pain until they are completely unconscious. Only high-ranking members of the church are supposed to know the twelve prayers and have the power to pull it off though. There has to be a group of exorcists helping these guys. Where did get these resources? Issei frowned. What are our options? Dealing with the anti-devil zone would be easiest. Whoever is saying the prayers must stay exactly still and focused. All we would have to do is disturb them to weaken it, stopping all twelve of them would cancel it completely. All right. You help Ria Sempei and I'll intercept the fallen heading towards the barrier team. You want us to split up? Azazel Sama told me to protect you. I'm not allowing you to face a threat like that by yourself. Azazel also said you should consider my orders as if they were his. Reynare's breath was caught in her throat as she felt several waves of power emanating from Issei. Diedrig will be helping me. So don't let me have to say it again. Go. Help. Ria Sempei. Rainer took off at full speed leaving Issei with Diedrich. The Welsh dragon spoke smugly. That girl is beginning to fear you. Good. Issei frowned. Fear is a powerful motivator but an even more powerful repellent. I'll have to apologize later. Let's go. We need to deal with that fallen. Diedrich nodded as he slowly disappeared from plain sight the small fragments of his energy reuniting with Issei's body. The dragon's disembodied voice now echoed within Issei's mind. Lead the way, partner. DXD, dot why are you doing this? A black-haired fallen angel slowly approached the downed and weakened Rias Gremory. He was actually impressed that the devil girl had managed to stay conscious while the seal was still draining her power and inflicting great pain. The rest of her peerage was unconscious. You're not in the position to ask such questions, foolish child. You wouldn't understand our great and noble ambitions. Rias grunted as she tried to summon her power. You. Don't you intend to disturb the peace that exists between the Grigori and the devils? The towering fallen angel spat in Rias' direction, his disgust more than obvious. Peace? 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 Between us and the devils? Don't be foolish. We were designed and destined to hate each other eternally. I can understand Azazel making peace with heaven but I will never forgive him for choosing to not continue our attacks on your wretched kind. Rhea seemed to be in too much pain to respond, the fallen angel took the opportunity to continue. He is too small-minded to see the truth. We will not stop until things return to how it should be. Killing you and the Tree clan heiress is only the beginning, every devil clan will be victimized until they finally launch an attack on the Grigori, and Azazel Sama will be forced to react, it will be glorious. You're insane, Grabalek. The fallen angel identified as Grabalek slowly turned around. Rainer. It's been a while. Still being a loyal spy dog to Azazel? Rainer smirked. Better than being a loyal little bitch to whoever has been helping you put this plan together. I know you guys aren't this smart. Where did you find such willing exorcists? Grabalek laughed. Wouldn't you like to know? There's a revolution coming Rainer. Something that neither you or that blind fool Azazel can prevent. I would suggest you make it known where you all stand before it's too late. The order for this new era will be. Chaos. Rainer frowned. Chaos? You don't say. You made three mistakes, Grabalik. Firstly you disobeyed a direct command from Azazel-sama. Secondly you insulted Azazel-sama in my presence. 
A purple lance of holy light crackled to life in Grabalik's hands to match the red spear of light that Rainer was holding. And my third? Turning your back on a pissed off devil. That voice wasn't Rainare's. Grabalek's attempt to spin was cut short by the ball of devil destruction magic that slammed into the side of the fallen angel's head, quickly and efficiently consuming it. The male fallen angel's headless corpse slowly fell over, there were still wisps of smoke coming from the charred remains of his neck. Rainer grimaced. The Gremory clan's destruction magic was pretty high up there on the index of powerful magics and spells in the mystical realm. She had no intention on ever being on the receiving end. Rhea slowly stood up. It's good to see you again Rainer San. I assume you are the reason that the seal's power had been weakening for the past few minutes? Rainer nodded. I just bonked a couple of the more powerful exorcists on the head to break the connection. The weaker ones struggled to maintain the seal's intensity. Grabalik would have probably sensed it if I had done anything more drastic than that. Rias nodded as she noticed Akano beginning to stir. You. Have my thanks. The Grigori loyalist nodded as she expanded her wings and prepared for flight. I will pass on your gratitude to the Grigori and Issei. Please excuse me, I'm gonna go check on that stupid brat before he does something. Boom. A gigantic explosion rocked the warehouse district sending a weakened Rias back to the ground. Rainer tumbled a bit but regained her footing easily. Stupid. Ah damn it. Rainer burst out of the roof at full speed leaving the recovering Gremory peerage to their own guesses as to what may have caused the previous explosion. DXD Issei coughed a few times as he slowly stood up out of a pile of rubble that was once a factory. His left arm was now encased by the red armor of the Welsh dragon's boosted gear. Well. That hurt. Diedrich's voice echoed from the green jewel that rested at the knuckle of the arm brace. That's what explosions are designed to do partner, hurt people. That's why persons normally try to escape the blast radius and not fly directly into it. Issei groaned as he stretched his body. Good point Lizzie, I'll take this into consideration. Oh look it's Ray Ray chan Rainer swooped down, her eyes reflecting her level of anger mixed with a slight hint of worry. What? Dot did you do? Issei began to scratch his head. Oom. Um. Please promise me you won't get mad. Rainer narrowed her eyes. Speak. Now. So. I intercepted the fallen angel guy that was flying towards the barrier team. Dot and when he realized he couldn't beat me in a straight up fight, he did this kind of kamikaze attack that was supposed to kill all of us. Diedrig had chosen that moment to cut in. That coward. Issei smirked. Little bitch is more like it. Rainer growled. Issei. Focus. Yes, right. As I was saying he went for the kamikaze attack and I. Body slammed him into this factory to prevent the blast from reaching everyone else. You. Dot did. What? Oom. Um, I saved the barrier team. By taking an explosion. Point blank. Oom. Um, with the help of Diedrig's power. Dot yay? Do you hate me? Are you trying to get a Zazel Sama to kill me? Oom. Um, no? Rainer started to rub her temples again. You're going home. Right now. I was thinking we could maybe stop for some ice. Right now. DXD, he slammed himself into the fallen angel before he finished the technique. Dot and survived the explosion? Sona sighed. This was probably the fourth or fifth time Rias had asked about the details of the night's occurrence. Yes, he certainly saved our lives. And not only did he survive, he walked away under his own power. I do admit that he did look to be in pain but the feat is still no less impressive. Rias nodded as she watched the Tree clan magicians heal the members of her peerage. Impressive indeed. Sona took a few moments to examine her friend's face. You're serious about going after him, aren't you? Rias kept her gaze locked on her recovering team. I almost caused their death tonight, Sona. I was naive, stupid, irresponsible and allowed my inexperience to dictate my tactics. That fallen angel would have killed us without Reynare's intervention. We need to get stronger and wiser. Adding someone like Issei to my peerage and awakening Gasper's potential would push us in the right direction. Sona blinked in surprise. Rias wanted to even bring Gasper out of hiding? Perhaps her friend was taking this loss harder than expected. She always knew Rias was a proud devil girl and now her pride was extensively damaged. She hoped Rias wasn't making any more rash decisions. Think about this carefully, Rias. Your peerage still trusts you completely. They would follow you to the ends of the earth. And that's why I want to protect them with all I have, Sona. 
and I don't think I can protect them and the rest of Kuo without serious firepower. Sona sighed. I understand. I would do almost anything to protect my peerage as well. But if you are serious about going after Issei, there's something you should know. Rias turned her attention to her best friend. Did something else happen? While Issei was fighting the fallen, he asked me to do him a favor. Rias titled her head in curiosity. A favor? Yes, he wanted me to. DXD, I'm going to what? Issei winced as Rainer helped him climb through his bedroom window. The fallen angel had remained outside as Issei tumbled through. You're going to attend school with me starting next week. I'll fill you in on the details as soon as I get them myself. You didn't think you should ask me about it first? Issei who was now standing in his room shrugged. I was just trying to make your job simpler. If we're in the same class it would be easier for you to keep an eye on me. Rainer was about to retort but Issei decided to continue speaking. And I'm a little concerned about what I saw tonight. Those two fallen angels seem to be a small part of a much bigger movement and plan to restart hostilities between the different mystical factions. I think it would be wise if we formed a proper alliance with our new allies. Rainer remained silent as her brain ran through the possibilities. She nodded as she relayed her response. Okay, this is one of the few times that you're making sense. I'll give Azazel Sama a call tomorrow. Very well, pass on all the info we learned tonight as well. I'd also like to apologize for scaring you with my power again. I don't intend for you to be absolutely terrified of me Rainer. I do need you to trust me as we work together though. Rainer grimaced. I. Dot C. I'll try my best to keep that in mind. Issei smiled. Good now for more important matters. Rainer narrowed her eyes as Issei walked up to the window with a perverted gleam in his eyes. How about a good night kiss like in those American romantic comedies? Slam. Issei had moved his face away from the slammed window just in time. A small chuckle escaped his lips as he drew the curtain shut. The eagle-sized version of Diedrich slowly manifested itself into the space that was next to him. I'm flooding the area with my energy. No one will be able to use any magic to spy on us, especially that fallen girl. Issei nodded. Thank you. Diedrich winced as Issei fell to his knees coughing, wheezing and vomiting. It would only last for about two minutes but it was enough to give Diedrich the impression that Issei was certainly on the brink of death. After a few minutes of quiet, the Red Dragon Emperor filled with deep interest and sorrow used his power to carry his partner's pale sweaty body into his bed. Issei's raspy voice could barely be heard. Thanks Diedrich, not only for this but for keeping it a secret. We are partners, kid. I'd never betray your trust. Dot but I must be honest. Your power is killing you, Issei. I understand that you had to use it to save then from that explosion but. Issei nodded. I couldn't allow those guys to die. Dot but I think I've found a solution to our problem. Just continue to lend me your power for now. Diedrich nodded. Very well, get your rest partner. I will, don't worry. About the mess. I'll get to it in the morn. Zs. Diedrich shook his head as Issei drifted off into the land of slumber. This was the first in a long time he had encountered a human that was so interesting. A human thy can beat a fallen angel and survive a kamikaze attack without using the power of a sacred gear. What else are you and that strange power of yours capable of Issei Hayudu? DXD there we go. There was chapter 3. Please review. Tell me what you liked and didn't like. Blessings. First, previous CH3 of 21 next chapter 4. Hey peeps. This is chapter 4 of technical support, hope you enjoy it. But before that let me thank all the reviewers and ask a good question. Do you guys prefer that I answer your reviews on the reviews page or here? I never asked before so let me know. Okay, not that's out of the way, let's go. Please remember to review, DXD Michael was silent. The mighty 12-winged archangel of heaven, the holy system's new, god. The first one who had sung for joy when the god had created something new. The one that had screamed out battle orders to the host of heaven as they descended upon their enemies. The one that mourned in agony whenever an angel had chosen the path of the fallen. The one who had supported and encouraged the other seraphim to stand strong and to keep up the good fight when even God himself had been killed. That Michael was now sitting silently under the tree of life. No singing. No talking. No humming. Just silent. For reasons she could not fully express, Gabriel was worried. The beautiful ten-winged female angel slowly but boldly approached heaven's new leader. Brother? Michael turned to her and smiled. Hello Gabriel, 
you've been standing behind me for some time now, are you alright? Gabriel simply returned the smile with one of her own as she sat at her brother's side. I'm doing fine. Any concern I have right now is about you. You've been very pensive since your conversation with Azazel, is there something wrong? Michael took a few seconds before answering. In a few months from now I'll be attending a conference with the leaders of the other great factions in an effort to solidify our ceasefire. Gabriel's eyes widened as she jumped to her feet. This is marvelous news. God always said that it is only through unity that great things would be accomplished. Michael smiled again as he invited her to sit back down beside him. Yes, this is indeed marvelous news but we have all agreed to keep the details of this meeting as a secret for now. Which means that you shouldn't go around telling everyone just yet. Gabriel nodded energetically. Okay, I can keep a secret, my lips are sealed. Michael tried his best not to laugh as his sister emphasized her words with the action of drawing a horizontal line across her lips. Yes, I do believe in your secret keeping abilities, sister, but I did learn something new this morning. Gabriel's eyes glowed with eagerness. Oh? Michael finally chuckled. Perhaps even the strongest female angel in heaven was not immune to the savory flavor of juicy gossip. There's a human that Azazel wants me to meet. A teenage boy named Issei Hayudu, he is the holder of the Welsh dragon's boosted gear. Gabriel's astonishment had not faltered one bit. Is he really strong? Michael nodded. Yes, supposedly he is. Azazel also claims that this boy has strange abilities and holds knowledge that can help us accomplish many great things. Perhaps peace between the factions of the spiritual realms would indeed be possible. Gabriel jumped to her feet again. Amen. How amazing. I feel like to spread my holy joy with the citizens of Heavenly City. May I go? I promise to not mention our secret. Michael nodded as he waved Gabriel along. Yes, please go and enjoy as you share ye blessings of holy light. Pass on my regards to whoever you see. Please keep in mind that the Seraphim have a meeting later. You're expected to be in attendance. Gabriel nodded energetically as her wings unfolded. Okay, I'll see you then, Michael. F-W-O-O-S-H. Michael only shook his head as his sister flew off, she truly had a gift for bringing joy to confused and distressed hearts. And in all honesty he did feel a bit confused, not because of the meeting or about Issei in general, it was about the most important detail Azazel had mentioned, the one he had chosen not to share with Gabriel. He wanted to be critical about it, but there was something in the back of his mind that was telling him that neither Issei nor Azazel were attempting to deceive him. Even now the words were still echoing in his mind. You won't believe this Michael. Dot but. Dot the kid knows our father's name, his real name. That was supposed to be impossible. There were only three people in all of the universe that knew God's real name. One of them was dead. The other two were Michael himself and Azazel. They both made a covenant with the father that they would never share it, and even though the father was dead, the system that presided over all creation still recognized all covenants, if Azazel had broken it. Michael shook his head. Azazel had committed many sins and was known for many unsightly traits but being a covenant breaker was not one of them. But, for this human to know God's real name, the implications were a little too much for Michael to the great archangel did know one thing for sure. He would be having a very long conversation with Issei Hayudu in a few months time. DxD if there was any benefit to being the girlfriend of Issei Hayudu, it would have to be the fact that Issei had been blessed with magical fingers. Culinary Magical Fingers. Rainer had discovered this truth two weeks ago when she had been invited over by Issei's parents for family dinner on a Friday night. She had primarily gone to solidify her cover as Issei's girlfriend and to give his parents enough of a backstory to keep them from asking too much questions further down the line. Telling them that she was an orphan being taken care of by an uncle, named Azazel, who spends most of his time overseas for business did the job effectively. A secondary objective she had decided on was to see if she could learn anything new about the brown-haired pervert from his family. All parents were well known for always spilling the embarrassing secrets of their children, weren't they? Rainer was convinced that there had to be something in the Hayudu home that could give her greater insight into the enigma that was Issei Hayudu. To her own shock, it was Issei's parents that had entertained her with tea, jokes and stories while Issei busily cooked up a storm in the kitchen. No one would have blamed the fallen angel for worrying about the future of her stomach. There was nothing about Issei that gave her the impression that this meal would be edible much less tasty. But once again to her surprise, even though the offered spread was simple, it was delicious. 
Delisa's shoes and the dessert was good. Really 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 good. It felt like her taste buds had experienced the ultimate orgasmic joyride. She would never admit her thoughts on the matter to Issei but she had a sinking feeling that the little brat already knew. After all, he was the one that proposed that the family invite her over every other Friday night. Rainer had happily accepted. Free, unbelievably good tasting food in a nice house with people that she didn't exclusively hate? Sounded like a win-win to her. It was now Thursday night and Rainer had just returned from a two-day trip to the underworld. She had been summoned before the High Council to share information she had gathered on Issei, Rias, Sona, Kuo Academy, the town of Kuo and the incident involving the rogue fallen angels. The High Council seemed quite interested in the fact that Grabalik had an outside contact providing with such valuable resources and were probably going to assign a team to investigate the matter. Upon returning to the realm of Earth, the first thing that was on Reynare's mind was to check on her ward and to make sure he had not done anything stupid in her absence. Knowing her luck, perhaps it would be better for her to hope that he had not done anything too stupid. And what exactly would be her reward for such diligence and faithfulness in her mission? Grocery shopping. Yes. Grocery shopping. As soon as she had arrived on Issei's doorstep, she had encountered the brown-haired teenager heading out to purchase the items needed for the Friday night family dinner. She soon found herself being dragged behind him to act as his shopping buddy. The raven-haired fallen angel wouldn't ordinarily allow herself to be reduced to such demeaning tasks but when she had been given the special mission of picking up the ingredients required for dessert, she knew her taste buds would thank her later for silencing her fallen angel pride. Issei was going to make strawberry short cake. Stewberry. Short. Cake. She didn't mind suffering for such a delicious delicacy. She could already feel it generating sparks of happiness with each bite. Rainer? I don't think you should be drooling on the strawberries like that. Rainer sighed as she slipped out of her food-induced daydream. Why were people getting the drop on her all of sudden? Was she losing her edge? She wasn't concerned that the person standing behind her knew her true identity. It would be more than were her colleagues after all. A frowning Rainer turned around to face the only other person standing in the grocery store's aisle. Donaseek. Middleton, I didn't think you two were the late evening shopper type. DXD in the small butcher's shop across the road, Issei was busily trying to pick between two very nice cuts of steak when Diedrig spoke up from within the teenager's consciousness. Partner? Hmm, yes Lizzie? You feel that? Issei didn't blink as he continued to look between his choices. You mean the fallen angels talking to Rainer across the road? Yay, I feel them but I don't sense her being worried or anxious so I doubt she's in any danger. If things change though, we go over there with all guns blazing. Boom, right. I was talking about our observer, the bat demon. Issei smiled as he turned to face the butcher. I'll be taking the one on the right. Excellent choice, young man. As the butcher went to work on the chosen meat, Issei responded to Diedrich's enquiry. Oh, the devil that's been watching us all day. Yeah I've been faintly sensing it too. What's weird is that I'm pretty sure I've seen it somewhere before. You think it's a familiar of one of those devil clans that we've interacted with lately? Hmm. Now that you mention it, that would make sense. I'm even willing to bet it's the Gremory clan. Considering what I've been feeling over the past few days. I'm not surprised that she would be keeping tabs on me though. Hmm indeed. I'll let you know if the familiar does anything interesting. Issei smiled. Thanks Lizzie. As a reward for such good work, you're getting an extra piece of steak tomorrow. I'm not an unintelligible beast that can be pleased with simple pieces of fatty meat, partner. A pregnant pause permeated the mental conversation between boy and dragon. You want an extra slice of the strawberry short cake, don't you? Now you're speaking my language, partner. DXD Donaseek chuckled as he folded his arms. Things have changed a whole lot since we last spoke Rainer. You were going to kill this kid and now you're doing some of his grocery shopping? Middleton smiled brightly as she leaned forward. Did somebody get some good dick and fall in love? Rainer rolled her eyes. Be serious for once. I did try to kill him but that boy is far stronger than I thought. To make matters worse he and Azazel Sama have met in person. The humor on both Donaseek's and Middleton's faces faded away quickly. The fedora wearing fallen angel growled. Are you saying that you can't beat a simple human boy? And he somehow now has Azazel Sama's acknowledgement? Rainer sighed rather loudly. Firstly, that simple boy is the wielder of the Welsh dragon's boosted gear and not just a weak brat as we had originally surmised. 
Secondly that's the reason I'm doing all of this crap, it's Azazel Sama's direct orders. Middle bit her bottom lip. Does Azazel Sama know of our presence here? I didn't say anything. But thanks to Grabalik's antics two weeks ago, I wouldn't be surprised if the High Council has an agent or two combing this entire region for out-of-place Grigori agents or rogue fallen angels. The answering statement made both Middlet and Donaseek look at each other. Rainair was experienced enough to know that their shared look meant something. Would you two mind sharing with the rest of the class? Donaseek frowned. We haven't seen Calawarner since last night. Rainair shrugged. She's a big girl, it wouldn't be the first time she disappeared to unwind or work on something. Middlet frowned. We're afraid that it might be serious than that. Rainair narrowed her eyes. What do you think happened? Middlet answered. When she left last night she assured us she would be back in a few hours, she claimed that she was just going to do some light surveillance around certain parts of the city. Donaseek continued. She knows all the highly concentrated devil areas so I doubt she would ever go anywhere near them. But perhaps she was spotted by a senior Grigori agent and brought back for questioning? All three fallen angels remained silent as they honestly considered the possibilities. Donaseek broke the silence. If she doesn't show up soon, we'll have to continue our plans without her. We should also keep our ears on the ground, if she is any form of trouble she'll need our help. Both female members of the fallen race nodded in agreement as Donaseek continued. We've acquired the device, we don't have anyone to test it on yet but we'll have our chance soon. Reynare's left eyebrow shot up. We will? Middlet nodded. Yes, a few of our friends in the hierarchy of the church have manged to become the latest caretakers of Asia Argento. Rainer narrowed her eyes. Asia Argento. As in that excommunicated nun with healing powers. I thought that the church took her completely off the grid. Since that incident, no one has heard a peep about her or her sacred gear. Middlet continued. Yup, but as we said before, her new caretakers are friends and supporters of our cause. They've pulled enough strings to get her out of Italy on a one-way ticket to Kuo. They want us to test to see if our relic is the real deal. Rainer frowned. What happens when the church realizes that she's missing? Who deals with the fallout? Donaseek shook his head. That's not our concern, our friends seem confident that they can cover this up with minimal difficulty. We just need to do our part in finding her once she gets to Kuo and carrying out the ritual. Rainer nodded. I see. I'm not sure how much of a help I'll be considering that I have my hands tied with the brat quite often but if I do spot her, I'll do what I can to get her to you safely. Donaseek responded. We understand, however if the device does work we might be transferring the sacred gear to you considering you are the most adept magic user in our group. Rainer nodded. I understand. Oh there's something else you should know. Our comrades in Switzerland are sending over an rogue exorcist to our group. His name is Fried Selzen. Rainer groaned. That bastard? Middlet smirked. You've met him before. Yeah, he is actually quite strong but he's just a glutton for killing and mayhem. He's a real whack job. As long as he doesn't turn against us we, LL accept his help. He's also supposed to play a part in getting that girl to us. So let's not come to a conclusion on him just yet. Rainer rolled her eyes. Fine. But don't say I never warned you about that damn psycho priest. Donaseek sighed. I think we've taken up enough of your time. I'm pretty sure your little boyfriend is done with his shopping across the road and will be waiting for you. We'll seek to make contact soon Rainer. Mitlilt spoke up as Donaseek turned to leave. We've decided to establish our base at the old church on the hill overlooking the town. So if there are any complications you should head over there. Rainer nodded as her fellow fallen angels quickly disappeared into another one of the grocery store's aisles. The raven-haired woman took a deep breath before returning her attention to Issei's list. Several new questions busily asking for answers in the back of her already cluttered mind. DXD, I spoke to Sona Sempei this morning and all the documents and details have been verified. You'll officially be attending classes at Kuo Academy starting next week Monday. Rainer grumbled as she flopped down on Issei's unbelievably comfortable bed. I am not sure what annoys me more, this idea or the fact that Azazel Sama approved it without a second thought. Issei was once again sitting cross-legged on his bedroom floor. His eyes were closed and his breathing was very relaxed. Oh please. You're a spy that's been in the game for a few centuries at least. I'm sure you've gone undercover at schools lots of times. A school assignment is for the amateurs or it's the type of punishment the High Council would hand out to you for screwing up on a big mission. I stepped up from that level a long time ago. Oh? 
and what exactly constitutes a higher level. Underworld brothels. Issei's eyes slowly opened. The underworld has brothels. Too many if you ask me. What you thought humans were the only race that was highly fascinated with sex. Issei shrugged before closing his eyes again. I guess you do have a point. Oh before I forget, something interesting happened while you were gone. Rainer groaned. What great act of stupidity did you commit this time? Issei pouted. It wasn't my fault this time, really. Uh huh, let's hear it. The sooner I know, the sooner I can buy migraine pills. So last night I was dropping off a DVD at Matsuda's place. It was that one I was telling you about, Magical Girl Coco vs. The Insect Men Part 4. Let me tell ya. The animation in this one was much better than in parts 2 and 3. Rumors have it that they hired a few of the animators from rival companies and that why this one was such a success. You should have seen how her eyes rolled over when the insect men. Issei. Focus. Tell me about your porn later, or never. Issei chuckled. Oh sorry, I just get a little zealous at times. Right as I was saying, so last night I'm on my way home when I get stopped by this fallen angel. A woman with navy blue hair, she wore this dark red trench coat. I'm pretty sure she didn't say her name. Rainer froze. I was gonna try to ask a few questions to see if she was connected to Grabalik or whoever he was working with but then she attacked me. Rainare's eyes widened. This was bad. Funnily enough I had also. Borrowed. A DVD from Matsuda. So to ensure the safety of that disc and its precious content I was forced to counter her attack with great force. This was really bad. Rainer gulped. You killed her? Issei furrowed his brows. I don't think so, but I might have. My attack literally blew her away. She could have landed anywhere in Kuo to be honest. I had to protect the precious. Rainer was sweating bullets as she stared at the back of Issei's head. There was no way that the brat would not connect the obvious dots. What I find interesting is that she was pretty convinced that I was supposed to be dead. Even said she was gonna finish the job herself, on your behalf. Shit. 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 Listen, I can explain. I know and you will. But I'm also sure that you wouldn't send someone weaker than you to try to kill me. It's not your style. It's one of the few reasons I haven't asked Diedrich to burn you alive yet. But this does leave me with a few questions of my own. Perhaps your explanation will answer them? Rainer bit her lip before speaking. The fallen angel that attacked you is an agent of the Grigori that is working on a few projects in the region. She is a colleague of mine and was aware of my previous intention to kill you. We haven't spoken since then so she wouldn't be aware of my new mission. Azazel ensured me that there was gonna be a order for all Grigori agents to stay away from me unless I asked for their aid. Yes there was but many of the agents that are in, deep cover, situations wouldn't receive those orders as yet. And by, deep cover, you mean agents that are probably here without the Grigori's knowledge, yes? Carrying out their own initiatives? Rainer remained silent. HMPH. I'm not a big fan of the whole, cloak and dagger. Escapade Rainer. I don't really care what you guys want to do as long as you stay away from me, my people and my stuff. Am I to expect any more of your colleagues to attack me? No this was a misunderstanding, an enormous misunderstanding. I ensure you that you don't have anything to worry about concerning any Grigori agent again. I shouldn't have to worry in the first place. You guys are terribly sloppy. I'm going to bed soon, I'd like to be left alone. Rainer slowly nodded her head as she exited Issei's room via his window. She turned back to the brown-haired teenager one last time. I'm really sorry this happened, Issei. The most sincere apology is preventing an event like this from happening again. Do what you have to. The fallen angel nodded as she closed the window behind her and flew off. DXD Komori, the bat demon familiar of Rias Gremory watched with great interest as the fallen angel that had followed Issei home left through the bedroom window. Her master had given her a fairly simple yet specific mission for the day. Follow Issei Hayudu, take note of his activities, report anything strange, interesting or remarkable. Based off what she had seen so far, she could only conclude that Issei had a sacred gear, had a good eye for stake and a fallen angel guardian. It wasn't much but the guys did seem a bit dull. It was more than likely that her master had some great level of interest in this boy, so any additional information would probably help. With the fallen angel gone she could probably use her, roaming eye spell to see what was exactly happening inside the Hayudu home. Komori sighed as she channeled her magical power into his eyes, talking out loud to no one in particular. I hope he isn't doing what most teenage boys do at night. I would actually have to report that. 
The thought of how her master would probably blush and sputter a bit was enough to bring a small smile to her face. Well here goes. The roaming eye technique was developed especially for demonic familiars that specialized in reconnaissance. By channeling magical power to the eyes, the user was allowed to see through walls and other obstructive material. Of course the technique wasn't perfect. A decent seal maker could draw an anti-scan seal on a building, rendering the technique useless. Another problem being that the user could only see through walls but not hear inside the building. Komori was adept at reading lips so she didn't think that would have been an issue. What Komori saw when she activated the technique didn't make sense. Black. The entire house was black, no rooms, no furniture, no people. Someone or something was blocking it. Did the fallen angel cast some kind of spell before she left? I truly pity you child. My partner was already in a bad mood and you only came along and made things worse. Komori gasped as she deactivated her spell. Hovering not too far in front of her was the red dragon emperor himself. He was barely larger than an eagle but she could feel his power all the same. She knew she was gloriously outmatched. You are the familiar of Rias Gremory correct? Komori's eyes widened as she turned around to see the object of her master's interest standing behind her, surrounded by a golden glow and levitating. Levitating? Since when could he do that? I would advise you to answer his question, child. Komori gulped. Yes, I am the faithful servant of Rias Gremory. Issei exhaled as rubbed his forehead. Just as I thought. What's your name? My name is Komori. Well Komori, your mission for today is finished. Now go home to your master and deliver a message for me. Tell her. DXD boom. And there is chapter 4 of technical support. Thanks for reading. Please review. It encourages me. Tell me your hits and misses. Fav an alert as well if you wish. This was your boy Kolsake. Peace. First, previous CH4 of 21 next.